Um, welcome to this video on how to work with the axis mundi. Uh, this is basically the axis of the world, also uh, uh, called the Yggdrasil, the world ash. The thing when you uh, start working with magic is there is uh, the power, the source, and just like the universe, uh, on a physical level, also the energetical universe is basically awash with power. There's no lack of power, just like there are suns in our universe which give off tremendous amounts of heat and radiation and warmth. Uh, there's also many sources of power in the energetical universe. But uh, the same problems arise. Uh, just as it is quite difficult for people here to harness the power of the sun in a very efficient, practical way, it's also quite difficult to harness the spiritual powers. Um, the problems are on the collection of the energy, uh, the transfer of the energy, transmutation of the energy into a form which can be used, and of course the storage of energy. So let's go through this step by step. So pretty much every religion or every um, yeah, method of uh, spiritual work or magical work has a cosmology in which uh, several sources of power are um, identified and also several methods of transmutation or binding are identified. And we can go into many different systems, many different religions but I prefer to try to look beyond that, kind of like what are the meta rules uh, which apply to all forms of magic. Well, the first thing is that uh, we need to make a contact with a place of power. Uh, in this case I will use the, the axis mundi, the axis of the world, which actually connects the higher world to the physical world to the lower world also called the Yggdrasil, which is a slightly different interpretation, but it also connects the higher world, the middle world and the lower world, and within shamanic tradition it's also very similar. Um, and even within the, uh, the Hindu system you have the Wheel of Karma, where you also have like divine planets, uh, earthly planets, demonic planets, so the system is kind, kind of universal. Um, the first uh, thing you need to uh, realize is that as it is inside uh, and the same way it is outside. So you can use your inner cosmos to connect to the outer cosmos. So by connecting to your inner higher vibrations you can also connect to the higher vibrations outside of yourself and if by connecting to your inner lower vibrations you connect to the lower vibrations outside of yourself. And by uh, creating, if you will, this axis mundi, this channel between the high worlds down to the physical world into the lower world, inside yourself, you can also manifest a similar connection outside of you. So you can create kind of a, a rainbow or pillar um, or axis, which uh, in a way is a doorway to all different types of energy uh, which you can focus on. So to do this as a kind of a preparation you need a relatively clean environment, uh, you need a healthy uh, uh, chakra system and you need a good energy circulation. So I won't go into how to do all these basic things. So but once we have achieved this the key factor is using our third eye and using our heart chakra. Through our third eye we have the ability to uh, connect our consciousness with many different dimensions and through our heart chakra we can actually create a link uh, between the energy we perceive and our own energy system. So by using these two chakras we can create a portal so I use my third eye to see higher dimensions, middle dimensions, lower dimensions. And at the same time I'm using my heart chakra to create a connection between myself and that dimension. And once I have 
this connection, like this flow coming into third eye to heart chakra. Then I use my uh, uh, Manipura chakra, my solar plexus, to manifest that energy outward so that I create an energetic structure outside of myself which contains that energy, which forms a conduit to that energy. You can also do that through your own body. Of course, you don't need to create an external conduit, but for the purposes of this little experiment, and also if you're creating a ritual space, it's very useful to have this external source of energy. Also, if you, um, for instance, uh, create a blessed object, like uh, an icon, this is also how the process inherently works. So, I will start with connecting to higher worlds. So I bring my energy up, out of my lower chakras, into my higher chakras. And then I refine my energy, so all the lower vibrations I expel from my aura to purify my own energy as much as possible. And then you feel like there's a kind of a tugging sensation as if your spirit wants to escape the physical world. And this means that you're now ready to create a connection. So I kind of open up my third eye so I can perceive the higher world and feel the contact with the higher world. Then I open up my heart chakra to create a bond between my physical incarnation, my presence here, and these higher worlds. To give it some time for these two to become one. When you feel there that these higher worlds are in a way descending into your heart chakra, you can start using your third chakra to manifest like the top half of the rainbow or of the pillar which focuses the high energies down and down towards more earthly energy. You may ask yourself why do you do it in this order? Why don't you start with the base of the pillar? Why do you start with the top of the pillar? Well, that's basically because of safety. Um, beings from higher worlds prefer to be in higher worlds, so they don't voluntarily come down here. But they do offer assistance if you ask them. Beings from higher worlds like to move up uh, to evolve into higher worlds. So if I would start with creating the base of the pillar, then beings from these lower worlds would start spilling out into, into the space and thereby disrupting the energy and preventing me from contacting higher worlds. So for safety purposes always start with the safe energies to create a kind of a safe environment, safe foundation, also a source of support for you before you start to do the really risky stuff which is contacting the lower worlds. So now we will start contacting the lower worlds. So again, I will use my third eye, but now I will bring my energy down as much as possible. So the energy is more now connecting also to my instinctual centers, my emotional centers, the willpower, the ego, the elemental energies. Now I do the same thing. I use my third eye to open up and feel the lower worlds. Then I bring this energy up to my heart to harmonize it, to accept it. Then I allow the energy to flow outward again and form the base of the pillar. So now we basically have a pillar in front of us 
with high energies on the top, low energies at the bottom. The pillar itself is very much tied to my own power, to my own energy. And that also means that it reacts to my own energy. So if my own energy goes out of balance, the pillar goes out of balance. So it is not a very stable structure which I've just created. But if you just want to yeah, create one spell, one golem or one blessing or one curse, this is enough. Just to have a source, you can work with the energies, pluck out the energies you want, assemble the construct you need and uh, be done with it. If you're going to use the pillar for a longer time, so more than one day, it's often good to stabilize it so you can really create a nice energy around your altar or around your ritual space, your meditation room. So to stabilize it, I will now use energies of order and chaos and light and dark. Um, it's important also to note that light and dark are not the same as low vibration and high vibration. Um, I'll go more into this when we work with that, but I will start with chaos and order. So chaos and order are equally risky because the power of order uh, is in a way a stagnating force which prevents all movement, all change, all evolution. And the power of chaos creates movement, but it can also in a way cause destruction because all structure is lost. So these two powers need to be quite carefully balanced uh, in order to create a very yeah, stable structure which is in a way in itself renewing itself. It has enough structure to uh, maintain itself but it's also not yeah, collapsing or stagnating. To stabilize the pillar of power or rainbow of power um, we need powers of order and powers of chaos, of light and of darkness and preferably also powers of culture and of nature. So I will start first with the powers of order and they're usually the easiest to work with. Um, the thing is if you go too much in that direction it is harmful. If you go a little in that direction it is beneficial and the same holds true for all the four directions. So I allow myself in a way energetically to freeze until I have enough stability to add to the, uh, to the column. So I open up, I imagine the world of order here on my left and I allow my energy body to go quiet, to become very still, to become very stable until like the energy flow is down to a trickle, but very strong, very focused, very stable. And at this point, when I feel my energy body is almost paralyzed, I project that order energy outward onto the energy pillar we are creating. Now I do the same with chaos. So I imagine it to be on my right and allow the energy in my own body to flow more chaotically. Allow myself to burn up in a way to dissolve the internal fires. When I feel I'm kind of like getting dizzy, almost losing consciousness, then this energy is allowed to flow outward to create a more harmonized, a more stable pillar. Also, you may, you may now ask yourself, so, okay, if there's light and darkness, why would you want to work with both? Well, that is the nature of the bridge. It's the nature of this connecting structure which connects all the worlds. 
it is not just connecting the worlds of light or the worlds of darkness or the worlds in between. It is connecting everything with everything. This is why it is the Yggdrasil, the world tree, the axis of the world. Um, because we as humans may have our own personal preferences, like, oh, I like this, I like that, I don't like such, I don't like, do like that. But this is not the nature of the universe. Everything was created out of the crea creator, or out of the source. And also everything is a part of that source. So even things we may consider dark or evil or smelly are also a part of the creator. And if you want a structure to be stable and to be harmonic, you cannot say like, okay, I'm going to cut off one part and allow the other part to remain because it creates a disbalance, which will ultimately uh, right itself by either creating an opposite image or by self-destructing. So if I would, for instance, say like, okay, I will choose only light, then this pillar of light would either flip in and turn into a pillar of darkness, it could destroy itself, or it could, yeah, in a way, cause the creation of a pillar of darkness, maybe on some other spot or some other place, because ultimately our universe is a universe of balance. And I think it's nice if you try to create a structure also to honor and to use that balance. So, I will start with the world of light and to focus on the world of light it is very much about uh, humility, about selflessness, um, about the willingness to, uh, to give, to sacrifice yourself for the greater good, for the benefit of others and also seeing even what we could call lesser creatures like a chicken or a dog um, as your brothers, as your sisters and it is quite good actually to try as a higher being or so-called higher being to serve them, to help them. This is true humility. So I put myself in that state of allowing my energy, what I have to give, making that available to the universe and I become part of this current of light by doing this. By selflessly giving I notice that the energy of the world of light starts flowing into me and through me, it starts to manifest outward and I allow this to flow into this energetic pillar I'm creating in front of. So, now I will uh, connect to the worlds of darkness. The path of darkness is basically a path where the self is more important than the other. So, um, in a lot of, uh, especially American books on spirituality, you will read a lot about self-development, uh, uh, how we are all sparks of the divine, that we should yeah, improve ourselves. Um, so all of this can be yeah, considered quite spiritual, leading to development, but also uh, part of the dark side of our cosmos. So it is not, the darkness is not about hurting others. Um, it is more about a different way, uh, a different focus, a different mindset um, of how we look at the world around us. And, um, to go into this, uh, this dark world, uh, we need to be aware of ourselves and to be very honest with ourselves. Because there are distractions which are very detrimental to your spiritual growth if you go into the world of darkness. But ultimately, to listen to the voice of your own spirit, your own soul, God within, 
is also part of the world of darkness, but it is quite beneficial. So heading into the world of darkness is something which should be done only when you're ready for it. So you need to have some process of purification, of getting to know yourself and getting to learn to control these dark sides of yourself. So all your destructive urges, your tenatic urges, um, your libidinous urges uh, should be known, should be recognized and should be uh, accepted. And if you have no quarrel with them, if they are not frustrated and thereby become perverted, they won't turn against you. So a process of improving your own personality is very necessary before you start working with the dark cosmos. Well, if you want to do it safely, that is, for your spiritual development. So I go now inside and make contact with those parts of me, which you could say my own shadow, the part which is disliked by my conscious self or by the outside world. And it's very important to pass through like all the very petty temporary layers of like I want food, I want sex, I want love, I want money, I want attention to get really to the root which is basically the soul, your essence of your being wanting to manifest itself, wanting to live, wanting to exist wanting freedom, wanting power. And this essential dark energy, once you feel it, it's like a current flowing through you, through all living beings, through all conscious beings. And to allow this energy to move out of you into this pillar. So the light energy allows you to project your energy outward, to share, to give to the world. The dark energy allows you to absorb energies, to learn lessons, to accept food, to accept nourishment, to accept energy, to accept help. So it's very much the inward and the outward movement. And the chaos and sorry, the chaos and the order. They help you to build with it. So the chaos allows you to go into a process of transformation, of learning, and the order allows you to reach new plateaus, new levels of understanding. And in the same way, in a way, as you are that internal pillar connecting all these worlds, you can now create an external pillar. Uh, which you can use for external processes. So for working on yourself, you should just work with your internal connection to the cosmos. But if you're, for instance, doing a ritual or performing a healing, it is nice to have this external source instead of having to yeah, pull everything out of yourself all the time. So <coughs> now that we have this pillar here, um, how to use it? Because when you start using your hands, you can tune in to the different energies, which can be quite high, quite vibrant, to more stable, earth-like, into quite low energies. And that's very much dependent upon uh, what you're trying to do, what energy to get out of it. And uh, often you need to also make sure that once you get an energy out, you also have, again, these four stabilizing factors which contribute to the long le longevity of the energy you take out. If you only want to uh, have a very short term effect, you can just pluck out an energy and throw it at the person or the place which needs that energy and it will burn itself out. If you're aiming for a more long term effect, you should really try to focus and get a good balanced energy out of it. And if you want to work on a certain level, ideally you would take energies of 
slightly higher vibration but not too much higher. Um, the reason for this is that everything is in a way translating or transmuting. Um, and it doesn't work very well if the differences are too big. So for instance if there is a big power line outside with a couple of million volts running through it and I plug it into my laptop the difference is too great my laptop will not benefit from it. First of all I cannot plug in the cable because it doesn't have a matching socket. Second of all it's alternating current and not designated current as what my laptop takes. Third it, the voltage is wrong so the energy will do more harm than it will do good. And it is the same with spiritual energies. You don't want to give an energy to a person who cannot interface with it, who cannot absorb it, cannot allow it into their system, or if they can allow it into their system it just upsets them. So ultimately you want to work with the minimum force. You don't want to disturb things more than you need to. So the energy you should get out of this pillar should be as close as possible a match to the energy of the thing or the person you want to help. But you usually want to make it slightly higher. The reason for this is because um, in a way slightly higher energies are usually the leading energies and lower energies tend to conform to higher energies. So if you give a higher energy then the lower energies which are just beneath it will move to match the higher energy. If you give a lower energy, then that lower energy which you're giving will in a way also match again the higher energy which is already existing. So if I give a lot of low energy to a person, um, then it strengthens that person in the pattern they're already in. So this is very useful if, for instance, the person um, has to run a marathon or has a very stressful job and they're basically doing okay. They just need more energy, they need more support. So if it is about quantity, which you want to increase, give a lower energy. But if you want to create a transformation, a structural change, a growth, then you should use a slightly higher energy. So, um, I will just um, have a slightly out of camera dog as my uh, goal here to, uh, to give some help to. So first of all I need to find more or less a corresponding energy. So you use your sensitivity to kind of compare what energy does the dog have and what energy is here in the pillar. Well, down here I feel a quite low energy. This is more the energy which you would find in an office building, in a machine. So this is too simple, too mechanical for the dog to be helpful, to help it to grow, to evolve. So I move my hands up a little bit and here I feel energies which are very typical for humans. This is a very human consciousness which is um, very mental, very structured, uh, very strong but also very preoccupied, very distracted by the world around them, by their problems, by and very much focusing on the negative. Um, so there's not the same stagnation I had before, there's already some movement, but it's a rather inward turn movement of a very disharmonic energy. So I move my hands upward still a little bit more, and here I notice the energy is much more harmonizing, much more helpful. Um, it has here a tendency to be more receptive, to listen to others, to find what can I do, what is my role in the world, instead of being self-conscious and trying to dominate the world. So this is an energy which is quite close to the energy of dog or of animals in general. Um, as you can feel the energy of the animals are, is actually more harmonic and more high and more light than the energy of humans. This is also why in shamanism uh, you, uh, animals are seen as teachers for humans and it is also beneficial for humans uh, for their physical health to be around animals. Uh, because basically the higher energy of the animals tends to yeah, harmonize and heal and cure the human energy body. So now I have a, an approximately correct energy. It, is, it becomes about purpose. It becomes about what do I want. 
because the energy itself is shapeless and I need to, as a magician to create a mold for the energy to flow into to become effective. So what I'm thinking of now is to create a slight watcher spirit. These are some of the more simple constructs which you can create. Uh, it is basically uh, very similar to an if-then-else program. So the uh, spirit will attach itself to, um, to the object which it is assigned to and if a certain condition is met it performs a certain action and else it generally just continues to do whatever its default programming is. So the watcher here I want it to feed slightly higher impulses into the dog to make it more into a happier dog and um, so this is kind of the default programming and the uh, if condition here is that if it is going into a very negative state a very negative programming full of anger full of hate full of other things that the watcher will try to create kind of a distraction for it and it will try to focus the dog back onto me so it won't go into its own negative drama but it will turn its attention to me and say like gosh I'm again having some problems could you perhaps help me so it is trying to encourage the dog for to look for help um, if I would make this encouragement and this help very strong it would be black magic because the dog would have no choice it would be caught in a strong current of energy which would drag its attention to me and it would be yeah, uh, in a way uh, just attached to me in a way that it could not detach itself this is basically how love spells work, how love potions work and how love curses work um, but I don't want to curse the dog, I want to help it or to encourage it to look for help so it's very important that the energies which I send won't be too strong they should be uh, available to the dog but the dog's own power and the dog's own willpower should be able to handle them and should be able to resist them if it doesn't want to follow them so it should be more like a gentle offer like if you want to come I will make it easy for you than that I drag the dog into a certain direction So now I have this mental image of what to do. I need to create a form, a construct, which basically can do that. Uh, creating construct is always slightly tricky because of the aforementioned balance, which I, uh, which I said. But every construct is made basically out of your three energetic centers. The mental center, knowing what to do, knowing how to do it about your power center in your stomach which basically creates the form, the shape, the will it should happen and ultimately the heart center which creates the connection between the source energy and the construct and the construct and uh, the patient. So you start with the mental energy so I create a concept of what I want it to look like once I have this construct, it needs to solidify, so I bring this construct into contact with my willpower energy. And it solidifies into an energetic shape. And this ball of energy now needs to be in a way charged by getting energy from the correct level. It allowing it to flow into the ball. This technique of creating watchers is often also used by um, yeah, magicians to keep an eye on um, their students, uh, their enemies. So now that I have the ball and it is charged, it's important to see if it is stable enough. So if it is unstable it will deteriorate, fall apart, 
and you can feel it shrinking it destabilizing as it is doing now. So that means that somehow in my image or my willpower wasn't quite right because otherwise the ball would stay in its current state instead of slowly decaying. So if there's not enough harmony that usually means there's not enough heart because the heart is basically where your consciousness, your essence of harmony resides. So and this is also a method of, of healing and purifying. So if you have a construct which is disharmonious, connected to the heart, and you can imagine a golden light flowing into it. Gold is usually the color of harmony. You can also think of green to stimulate the heart chakra. think of, in this case, the patient. And once the structure is harmonized, you can again feel like, is it harmonized? Is it stable? Yes. And it should also be pulling in your hands because it wants to go to its assigned target. Uh, so now I will just release it. It will go to the dog and watch out for the dog. So, this is basically how you work with the Axis Mundi, with the Yggdrasil. Um, it's also important that since you have now an open connection, that you don't allow strange things to come true. Um, so leaving it open and uncontrolled uh, can lead to all kinds of weird things happening in your house. Um, so it is important, if you want to reuse it, at least to deactivate it. Um, the deactivation is done in a very simple way. You store it inside planet Earth. Um, so you take the energetic structure and in the same way as you do your own grounding exercises, so you make roots out of your feet, out of your pelvic area and you sink your energy into the ground to become part of planet Earth, you in a way do a grounding while holding this pillar and you pull it with you into the earth and you allow yourself to go up but you leave the pillar just inside the earth and then you can later retrieve it and bring it back up if you need it again so i'll just demonstrate i connect to the pillar my consciousness should embrace the whole pillar and myself as well so you need to stretch your consciousness a bit so that you're holding both the highest and the lowest vibration and connect to the earth to allow your energy and the energy of the pillar to flow into the energy body of the earth where it won't upset anything Another alternative, uh, if you don't want to put it in the earth, is to take the energy up to the formless worlds. But this is a lot more difficult. Um, it requires people to be able to step beyond their humanity, beyond their current personality. And putting it in the earth also works quite well. So. Okay, thank you for listening. And I hope this exercise will uh, help you with... Uh, your rituals and your magic.